so often when it comes to the pain of mental health, it's so challenging because you can't, it's not a bruise that someone can see viscerally. It's not a broken limb. It's not the loss of something physically, but it, the pain of it is so real. It, it's like an elephant on the chest. It's hard to move your body. Your yep. brain feels like it's too many sizes too big and it just exhausts you. And that's what's so important about checking in on each other. And I think why I'm so honored to get to have this conversation with you and be a part of this is that you, it's so easy to pretend or for someone else to pretend and to not know what, what the pain is that they're going through just because it's not visceral, but seeing it isn't believing it, believing that this can happen is seeing it and knowing that anyone you pass can be in this place is so key. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many people have told me throughout the years that I've that I've come clean, if you will, about this. Uh, said to me, I had no idea. Like I had no idea. You you hit it so well, uh -huh. and you know there was that. Luckily, the the per, the sort of perception that we are able to get through this through our own volition and some people are some people some people can some people somehow have the tools within themselves to crack the code if you will um and 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 find peace and solace whether it's through education and which is something that that i i'm doing as well and and educating myself i've been for decades and mm -hmm. But sometimes, uh, you know, it. Sometimes uh, the physiological aspect is more severe in some than others. Uh, you know, my serotonin might not be produced in the same way that other people are, and and it might take medic. There you go. I, know. Right? <laughs> I need medication too. Yeah. And there, there, there should be no shame with that either. Like no, every and for a while. Yeah. I thought that there was. I thought it was, you know, because that's. That was the public perception and slowly it's changing. And well, I, th I think we need, I think there's more to go when it comes to medication. I think oh, there's yeah. a lot of villainy still with it. I know there was a chat that Lady Gaga did with Oprah and she opened up about um, her own experience with mental health and her struggles and how she felt shame about medication. And she wanted to eradicate the fact that she was like, I'm on it. I take multiple pills for multiple things and it helps me and it's okay. Me and it too. doesn't me less of a human yeah same and and it's so key to take away the the pressure that oh to be natural or whatnot and i see that a lot being in the fitness wellness space that i'm in oftentimes sometimes the intent of somebody to try and say hey you have everything you need within yourself that's it i understand it but we also can't be providing that either we can't be standing for something that might not work for everybody right and, and it's funny because again, going back to that uh, mindset of what do I have to be depressed about? It, it goes right to the, to the physiological aspect of it. Like this is a, there's a physical ailment here. Like there's something that needs to be fixed with care, with a doctor's care, with, and if, if, it, if it needs medication or therapy or both, then so be it. Again, it's like, you know, I, you don't choose to be a diabetic and have to take insulin, but that's just, a, that's just the way your physiological makeup is. And so if my neurotransmitters are misfiring and my serotonin production is it, you know, terrible lows and stuff like that, then I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to have crappy thoughts because yeah. my mood enablers aren't working. Yeah. And if that's are without a proper engine or with a, with an oil, you need to change the oil. There's certain things you have to do. Right. And just because it's not something that you can see or not something that is considered, Oh, it's just a physiological ailment, even though it is, doesn't mean that you have to be upset with it. it you don't have to, I feel like mental health, and having mental illness or any struggle in that sense, you internalize it as something that's wrong with you. Yeah. That you were built wrong or you were made wrong. But I'm a very firm believer, and this is a little bit more spiritual, but I truly believe that everybody has a purpose and everything has a purpose. So if I am this particular way, it is with a purpose. And so right. it's upon me within this life and what I do with it 
to tap into that and use it instead of running away from it or hiding it like it's something to be ashamed of. Well, you should be very proud of yourself because that's huge. And and I think I'm just recently getting to the point, and this is has a lot to do with it. This interview, this discuss I don't want to call it an interview, it's a discussion. Yeah. Um a conversation. I think that this is helping me turn the corner in that aspect as well, as far as going, you know what? Open up your mouth. You it's like you blab all day long anyway. Why don't, <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you do something constructive with your blabbering? <laughs> you got a big old mouth, use it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I feel exactly. Your mouth, that's for sure. I talk a lot. I talk a lot when I'm teaching. I talk, and it, it's funny. There was a turning point for me in the past year when it kind of was like, there's this many people that I'm grateful enough to get to now be in connection with and to have a community with, like what you were describing when, you, when you're in a show. And it's so beautiful. I've had it in a much smaller scale, but with people in classes or different things of that, and you build a bond. And it, it's a really sacred, beautiful thing too. And so there was a point when I was teaching where I was like, what am I doing? I'm yelling motivation at somebody, but I myself am human and going through this, I'm with them. It's not me up on a pedestal or up on a stage preaching like I know everything, how, how, to, how to live, how to do it. No, I mean, I'm in my twenties. There's so much crap I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. I'm very aware of that. Right. But at the same time, it's so beautiful to get to, when I get to be, when I share my vulnerability, when I say I have anxiety and depression, I had a really bad day, this is, there's days when I love my body. There's days when I don't, there's days when I question who I am. I've been suicidal and I've also loved life. Getting to share that is not only an exhale for me, but it also, it so connects on a human level and it is that community. And so you're so right. If you're going to be speaking, speak the truth, speak right. your humanity, speak yourself, because that's, what's actually going to impact somebody else. I think that's the whole point. You know, without a doubt. And I think what you're doing is, uh, is noble. And I think that too, though, I mean, connecting through music is the same thing, putting what, putting your feelings, your emotions, providing a soundtrack for people like music heals. I know it definitely has healed me. It's so helpful. And yeah. that's that same thing. Yeah. That's always, again, as we spoke of earlier, that's been the one thing that I can go to, I mean, uh, uh, a pair of headphones and, you know, my, my phone, um, and I could just dial up whatever it is that I, I, that I know will get me through, whether it's uh, Slayer or Motown music, it yeah. runs the gamut for me. Yeah, I love that Slayer. Whether Elvis or the Beach Boys or, uh, oh. You know the Andrew sisters, for God's sakes, from the. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so, that that's one of the great things about growing up in a house with four older brothers, where there was music just playing consistently throughout the day, and so it made it made the day joyous. Mm -hmm. And see, that's that's one of the other things that's really interesting about depression, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and mental health is that is the rationalizations that you try to make and 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 come up empty like i grew up in a very loving family mm -hmm. uh i grew up in a family where there was you know a lot of uh music being played and a lot of joy and a lot of happiness but because of the uh era uh when i first started noticing little things about you know my my depression, uh, mm -hmm. trying to figure out where that was coming from. I wasn't coming up with any answers. And again, you, you know, we were in a day and age where you didn't ask questions about that. It was, you were supposed to figure it out on your own. So having a seven year old kid attempting to figure out why he's sad when things around him are, are, you know, not that way. Yeah. It, I think you're pointing to something really key as well. And that was a big moment in, kind of that turning point when I had that breakdown and was then moved back in with my family, took a leave of absence from school for a little while. It was really my senior year of college where I finally just couldn't pretend anymore. And a lot of the beginning of processing and me going to therapy was why do I have this when I came from such a lovely place? Like my parent, I have incredible parents. I have incredible family. 
it was that same thing. I was youngest as well. So I don't know, maybe it's the youngest thing, who knows? Yeah. But, but I, I saw so much joy and love and, and excitement and, and all of these wonderful things and great opportunities and, and wonderful childhood. And then I was like, what's wrong with me is where I went first that I'm so effed up that here I am. And, and That's it is- exactly it, what I did. Yeah, and it's just like, it, there's so much shame with it. And I still, there are moments every now and again where I still feel shameful over the time I feel like I missed or the, the there's some points in my life where I don't even remember it. It was like four or five months I don't remember at all. Yeah. And I'm like, God, I was so living for getting out of it or I was so living for trying to avoid it that it still controlled me. And so it's definitely a journey now to stay present. And I'm kind of curious too, the, the pandemic has definitely been a struggle and it yeah. has for all of us. It's definitely put me in a new place with my mental health. How have you been, how have you been holding up with pandemic? From a music I've been up and down. Yeah. To be quite honest, I've been up and down. I found that uh, shortly before, not shortly, probably about a year or two ago, I started developing uh, massive anxiety again. Mm -hmm. um, I had, see, this is funny because uh, as strong of a proponent of medication as I've been, mm -hmm. uh, I, with a doctor uh, helping me along the way, I weaned myself off of it as I was feeling better. And I was off of medication for nearly between two and three years. Yep. And then all of a sudden, yeah. out of nowhere, ton of bricks, right? It, it, it was unbelievable. It was so shocking to me. Like I, I started out of nowhere, I started losing a lot of weight and started the anxiety started going like off the chains. Uh, and the panic attacks came back and I was like, I, I, there's no rhyme or reason for it. And, and so I've been back on medication um, it was the first thing I did was uh, I wasn't resistant to it. Uh, I was just look, cause it was a, it was a bad meltdown. Um, like in an airport, like in, in a corner of an airport, uh, trying to hide curled up in a ball. Uh, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, and just the idea of getting on a plane, um, to go anywhere was, uh, it was, it was so overwhelming that, um, that thankfully my band members were there and were able to, to at least get me through that. Uh, and my wife on the phone as well, but I got home and got right back on medication and, and back into therapy. And, uh, uh, but the anxiety is still living with me. So it's not as bad as it was in that particular moment, but it, it gets pretty bad uh, at times. So it's been, it's been a struggle, not every day, but it's a day by day thing. Um, and I don't know where the anxiety comes from. I don't know, but it's like the, the least little thing will cause me anxiety and I'll look at it from an objective perspective and be like, there's nothing here that, that it should cause you anxiety, but yet it does. Yes. And the worst part, I, ugh, what you just said. So I feel that on so many levels, cause that's kind of been where I've been out with pandemic lately is completely self-aware. Like I can intellectually understand the fact that whatever the experience is, whatever triggered it should not be causing me the reaction that I have. I can tell you why I can give you the logic. I can read a book and tell you why I can tell you what's happening up here. Cause I know it sounds like you also did the same thing, like digging and searching for answers and going almost the academia route to figure it out. And yet, and yet the feeling persists. And then yeah. you almost get frustrated with yourself because sometimes I feel split. Like I feel like there's the level-headed intellectual part of me. That's just like, here's Miss Logic who this is where you're at. And then there's this, my anxiety and depression. That's just like, I don't care. We're still here. I want your attention. And this is what's happening right now. Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly it for me as well. Yeah. I, I find myself uh, in that inner struggle and inner battle yeah. of attempting to, like you said, sort of rationalize uh, with the, 
with the anxiety and with the panic, but there's no rationalizing with it. Um, no, it's just accepting it and working through it. And working like, through it. It uh, demands all of your attention. Yeah. Like, it is a diva to- Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> like, oh my God, no, I'm not gonna like separate the M&Ms and your writer, like relax. Like, <laughs> That's laughing. really funny. <laughs> but it's true. It does demand all your attention. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things that is exhausting. Uh, where where you just all of a sudden you're lethargic and you lack the motivation because you're getting beat down by this thing. Yeah. And that's like it's a fight. It's a fight. Yes. And I see that's funny because that's I think where boxing played in in my journey so well because it was such the representation of what I was going, that struggle internal, but it's such a big thing in what I bring to what I do now. And I talk so much about staying in the fight and I talk so much about like, I remember my dad when I was going through my depression and and God bless him, like this one line and I always close out my class with it. It's kind of my personal motto, but he told me, he goes, it can knock you down, but don't ever let it knock you out. Right. And it, it was that that concept of it's okay to get clocked by it. It's okay to have a really bad day. It's okay to not be able to win all the time. But the only thing that's not okay is if you allow it to keep you down. Right. Is if you don't keep trying, if you don't understand that it's a it's a journey and it's a process and it's it's not a check mark. And I think you you mentioned that earlier. Mental health isn't like a light switch. You're like, oh, I figured it out, A plus. Like, no. Right. It, you just, it's always, and it comes in different phases and stages. And yeah. I feel like I've definitely done the thing where I was like, oh, I'm good. My life is great. I don't need medication. And I did it for a while yeah. and damn, it comes back at you. It's crazy. Yeah. I thought yeah. I was, I thought after, you know, two years or, or close to three years that I was, you know, free and clear, like, look at me. Yeah. And then all I, of a sudden, I beat it. Yeah. Yeah. I beat it. That's exactly what I said. I beat, I beat, I beat my, yep. I beat my mental or my, my depression or my anxiety or whatever. And it's right. just, it's not, that's not the rules of the game. 